they know that they're going to face life imprisonment? Mm -hmm. Or do they get to be told they're going to face life imprisonment when they face the charges? Do, and do, do you think men really <laughs> don't know? I honestly don't know. Because now, you, I now don't you find yourself in court. Yeah, I think they don't think about it before doing it. And now they, are found, they find themselves in court and the, the judge is reading the sentence and they're like, life imprisonment. So, because this is the court of appeal, this is where appeals mm -hmm. happen. So yeah. already the case has been heard, the sentences have been uh, given. So this is where someone wakes up and like, I cannot face life imprisonment mm -hmm. because of doing ABCD. Yeah, yeah. So that um, triggered something. Maybe they just don't know the magnitude of what they're doing and what they're going to face before mm. the court of law and, mm -hmm. the, uh, and the punishment. But in this case, you, you know, they're questioning your moral uh, standing, Obli of course. Yes, yes, yes. So, so, so based on that and also based on the fact that these are not girls who, mm. you can say, uh, they consented 18 years and above. Yeah. And these are also children who really are helpless. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I thought it's best to either teach the society on the laws that affect children mm -hmm. and also just like on sexual offenses matters there's no consent you cannot tell me a 10 year old consented to a grown-up to have sexual activities yeah that yeah. is not a defense mm -hmm. so i wanted to come up and bring up all this mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. ensure that the society know mm -hmm. that this is the evidence you need this is what you're supposed to keep as evidence this is what you're supposed to submit in court and it's admissible in court but, but now Sheila even as you so you saw this and you're like you know what I want to do something about it yes uh, um, but for, for many Kenyans you know this child law um, up to what age does it cover is it uh, because you, I've seen you mention 10 years yeah. is it 18 and below also because we see in this country even teenagers getting married off does this law cover them Yes, so uh, the Constitution and uh, the Children's Act mm. in Kenya define a child as any person who is below the age of 18 years. Right. So all these laws mm -hmm. rights under the Children's Act and uh, Article 53 of the Constitution mm -hmm. covers anyone who is below 18 years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about child marriage, if a child is uh, married, that is already an invalid marriage it's it's invalid from the start we call it ebenezer from uh -huh. the start from the yes. beginning from it the beginning so it's null and, void. null and void no matter who approves it yes it doesn't matter this consent it doesn't matter this dowry uh -huh. it doesn't matter the circumstances even if parents are involved it doesn't matter that is null and void now um uh, uh you've seen how people react you know you you've been in court you've seen how you know the reaction from both family of the uh, accuser and the accused defendant and the uh, you know so if you look at um how we are as a society you know um how do you see the country and the state of the society as we know it when it comes to this uh, a kind of uh, defilements mm -hmm. you know um, what comes into your mind you know when you sit in that courtroom and uh, you're hearing all these stories all these cases you know um, and, and of course most most of them I presume are uh, for uh, concerning the ladies the female uh, as opposed to the men of course the male are also there but most of them are the ladies you know how do you see the society as it is as of now moving forward you know would you say that there are some things we need to work on uh there are definitely a lot of things we need to work on uh, from from to, to simply start with we need to create awareness mm -hmm. in the society not just the urban centers also the rural sector sectors because these men need to know that okay mostly men they need to know that this is wrong and this is what you will face if mm -hmm. you are convicted mm -hmm. they need to know it's yeah. life imprisonment for any child below the age of five mm -hmm. they need to know that there's nothing like consent so if you d defile a 16 year old and then they, they tell you, oh yeah, but I agree to it. That is not a defense. You are a grown-up. You need to be protecting 
the child. Even if the child says I accept it. Yes, you can. You cannot be like she said. I. She said yes. Mm. She agreed. Yeah. That's why we say uh, it takes a whole village to raise a child. Mm. This is where uh, your responsibility as an adult comes in to protect the child. Mm -hmm. And it's worrying because uh, most of the children are vulnerable, and it goes all the way to simple things like sweets, simple things like exchanging small gifts mm. in exchange of uh, uh, sexual uh, activities, yeah, yeah, if, yeah. If, if I'm to say. Mm -hmm. But then to come back to your, to your, to your question, if there's anything that you're doing, mm -hmm. uh, recently uh, our CJ, Mata Kome, Kome yeah. yeah, just recently, mm. as, they were, uh, com uh, as they were celebrating the the women judges, mm -hmm. international women judges, mm -hmm. uh, she came up with a special court on sexual gender-based violence yeah. and with a policy of um, no adjournments. Mm -hmm. What this means then is that uh, if there's no adjournment, it means the healing process of the victim mm -hmm. is shorter. It also means that evidence is not going to be lost in between because mm -hmm. if the court process is longer, it means that Evidence is going to be lost. Yeah. Witnesses are going to give up on the way. Mm -hmm. They're not going to show up every time. Mm -hmm. And you as a victim, looking at your, uh, your accuser or your defiler every time you come to court, it's sort of mainting. So mm -hmm. it pro prolongs your healing process. Yeah, so if yeah. there's no adjournments uh, in between, it means the case period will be shorter. It'll be shorter. And yeah. for you as a victim, it's easy for you to heal quickly. And that also means justice is served to you mm -hmm. as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So that's a a good step we've so far mm -hmm. uh, can say we have uh, made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I love the fact that you're saying that you know what, as a society, we still need to do something about it. And uh, the the CJ uh, Matakome also chose to be at the front line to come up with ways and measures that we can be able to you know uh, fight such kind of offenses, especially concerning gender based. Um, and that's what legal system is all about. Yeah? Yes. yes. So um, l l let me get from you. As you've uh, 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 been working under uh, you know, the foundancy of legal sisters, what are some of those stories that you managed to come across that have, uh, you know, that hit you? You know, there, there are those things that you, you hear and you're like, oh, you cannot forget. Those experiences that you go through mm. and, and and it touches you, it leaves a mark, and it makes you question so many things uh, at the same same time. Yeah, so um, during uh, the period of COVID when it had just hit, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. that's when I also had uh, just founded the organization. Mm -hmm. And I was not talking to the community around me and just see how I can help because the cases of defilement had gone up. Yeah. And there's this case in um, in Kawangware, which really, I still remember it and I'm still, I can't get over it in my head. Mm -hmm. And um, this is where um, the mother of this 14-year-old uh, works as a house help, a house manager mm -hmm. in sub suburb somewhere. Mm -hmm. The father is a drunkard. So because of COVID, there were restrictions. The boss to the lady, the mother says, you cannot leave the house because of uh, COVID. Oh, so she has to work from home. You have to work <laughs> yeah, from there. So yeah. there are no offs, there are no. So she has to leave her 14 year old and a six year old son with the father. Yeah, so, so all she, she does. They, 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 um, they stay together as a family? Uh, no, so the mother is working. So she cannot leave her workplace because of COVID. Oh. They do not want it spread. Okay. You know, commuting, coming back and coming all back. that. So she has to stay at work. She has to stay at work. Uh -huh. So these are uh, a 14-year-old girl with a 6-year-old boy and the father who are in the house. At home, yeah. So, so yeah, at home. So, so this, the 14-year-old the has to literally take care of the family. Yeah. And as much as the mother will send in some money, mm -hmm. But uh, she has to cook, she has to clean, she has to ensure the brother goes to school, she has to ensure that the father gets also his meals in mm. time. In because it's expected that it is a, a, a lady, yes. a girl that should be and doing those normally things. Normally how we are oriented as a, a society. Mm -hmm. 
So it got to a point where now the, the father started defiling the, the, the girl. And the girl got used to it. And now we, we, we come in and be like, this is not right. Uh, this is not supposed to be happening. And uh, you need to report your father. The girl said, no, she he is my father. How do you expect me to report my father? And my mother is not there. I have to take up all her duties. And this is one of them. Wow. So how do you convince a, a daughter to go to the police station and report the father? The mother never knew about it. The mother didn't know. She was at work. All she could do is just communicate and send some money here and there. So these are, these are, you, 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 you as um, the girl, she felt like she had the obligation to do that. And she didn't see the need to put her father behind bars just because of that. Wow. Yeah, that was, that was deep and you just don't know how to help. So she needs more counseling. She needs more talking. She needs to be removed from that environment first because it's definitely toxic for her. But was she still there? No, 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 no. That was in 2020. So we managed to talk to her. She went to a different place to stay with her, another relative mm. so that we can just separate the two first. Wow. Yeah. That's so touching. So and touching. this, that is just one of them. You deal with so many mm. and you're like, the world is definitely you know, it's a good place for the kids. Um, we're talking about the strength of a woman. Yes. And, and, and I love that you, you know, you, you're getting yourself out there. You want to challenge the status quo. You want to change it. Mm. You know, we are not going to, to allow things to, up, to happen, you know, just because one person feels as though, you know what, it's happening, Let's, it's okay, it's happening. So you want to be the voice to the voiceless. And, and, and I love the fact that you're choosing to stand for women, mm -hmm. and not just for women, anything concerning uh, gender. Yeah. You stood out for me. You did something, and of course, I want you guys to, 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 to check this out online. This particular lady did something that was so unique. You remember the issue of the border border operator? You remember that? She filed a petition. That's an amazing thing you did, Sheila. What, what made you do that? <laughs> and and it, it came in so quickly. I saw that. Uh, that was your petition. The one that was being shared online. I saw it uh, everywhere. Okay. Yes. Uh, and uh, I, I wouldn't say I did it. I would uh -huh. say my organization did it. Yeah. Because it was more of teamwork. Mm -hmm. So what happened that day is this. I think it was on the 5th. In the, on the 5th of uh, March. Yes. yes. So someone, uh, uh, um, a member of Legal Sister brought it up to our attention mm -hmm. and she was like this something has happened and it's circulating and i don't like it i looked at it i just cringed because yeah like, it's, it brings shivers this is not a position we want anyone to, to be, be yeah. in and some of us who were there just feeling sad and angry but um uh, uh one of our board members called jack jacqueline omol i said let's do something let's start a petition mm -hmm. and we were like yes that is it let's start a petition and after five minutes negotiating and researching and just going through all the available uh, laws mm -hmm. we came up with a whole list of the changes you want to see the proposal you know why. One, thing, one thing that i love is when <laughs> a woman wants to do something what you put on a yes everyone puts things a, work a, Everything was put aside. If you're working on something, it was put aside and we, we had all the write-up ready. Yeah. In five minutes, uh -huh. it was out. In two hours, we had over 100 signatures. Wow. Yes. And what does You that wrote it within five minutes? Yes. Yes. Five minutes. The strength of a woman. <laughs> <laughs> hey. You put everything aside. Yeah. And it was teamwork, and everyone was just shooting a point after point and after, and everything was out. And oh, oh. I'm really glad Kenyans agreed to to that because yeah. see when people and not everyone is online, mm -hmm. but those who were online were able to sign. They agreed mm -hmm. with whatever happened was wrong, 
and should not happen again. And we really need laws to regulate the border border business. Yeah. We accept that it's uh, many livelihoods uh, depend on it, mm -hmm. and we accept that it is um, it is income generating. Mm -hmm. But a few mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. who are we call them the rock riders, they should spoil for others. You can see on your screen there. That is the document itself. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Kazi <laughs> Safi What was the, uh, 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 how did it end? What was the end result? And uh, tell me what was, what was the, uh, the outcome of that whole process for you? Okay, so, so we managed to garner over 230,000 signatures. That mm -hmm. was impeccable. Uh, currently, now we are working with change.org where we started the petition mm -hmm. to see how we can uh, come up with. Um, how we can implement the proposals that we had. Yeah. And since we also have um, political goodwill on this, we've seen what the president has yeah, said, yeah, yeah. we've seen what uh, the interior CS uh, cabinet uh, secretary has said, Mr. Yeah, Matiangi, yeah. we've seen what the transport sector is doing, the police, mm -hmm. yeah. Every, you have the backup of yes. everyone. So we have everything in yeah. place. We have all the support. Mm -hmm. We just need to ensure that we support NTSA to come up with the training, mm -hmm. the registration. As the Mr. President said, uh, they'll be given free licenses, so mm -hmm. they don't need to pay for it. Mm -hmm. uh, the e, is it smart license? Yes, yes smart yes. license. Smart li yeah. so they don't need to pay for it, but it needs to be done within 60 days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so far as you speak, there were only 15% uh, of um, riders with licenses out of 2.4 million. Mm -hmm. So we need at least at least 90%, if not all, mm -hmm. are given yeah. licenses. And before they're given licenses, they need to be vetted, they need to undergo the training. And not just the training for road safety they at least need to go undergo tra training for uh first aid they mm -hmm. need to undergo training on being non-sexist and they also need to undergo training of being non-violent and what to do if there's an incident accident on the road mm -hmm. how do you handle it yeah, they yeah. need to know the procedure there's the, the someone complaining that we are passing a blanket judgment from one isolated case uh then the the good ones need to need to report the rogue ones so that they don't spoil the the business for everyone else yeah and yeah. if you know this this and i i'm saying that this is way overdue mm -hmm. because this has been happening and not just what's happened on uh, wangari matai road which was a uh, sexual and physical uh violation mm -hmm. we've seen uh but uh um, doing robbery with violence, we've, we've been we've been we've been seeing um, accidents on the roads caused by uh, border border riders. We've seen so many things that are criminal in nature mm -hmm. happening on our roads mm -hmm. caused by border borders. Yeah. So if we have to stop it, so that we can streamline the whole uh, business, so be it. Mm -hmm. We'll suffer a bit, but we'll also make it easier for those who are intentionally went into the business, do it properly in a good way. We are also protecting those who really want to be in for the business bit of it. Mm -hmm. And we also appreciate them. We know sometimes you're running to the airport and you're late and the only savior is that border, 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 border guy. guy. Yeah. yeah. And it's a good business. The deliveries, we do deliveries within two minutes, it, mm -hmm. it's gone, it's sent. Yeah, you know, you know there's someone complaining that, uh, you know, um, that they are... Their, 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 their motorbikes have been impounded mm. and uh, you know the, that crackdown was lifted yes it's been lifted yeah but mm. uh, now the, the the police are saying you know what the crackdown was lifted but it doesn't mean that we release your motorbikes so you mm. know some of, of these border, border operators are complaining they're saying you know what uh, you are asking for bribes we will not give you bribes well, that is uh, another whole total different issue yeah <laughs> and, 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 and everyone is <laughs> That I think it's a cobweb? Yes, it's a cobweb that uh, we shouldn't be now taking advantage of the situation. Mm -hmm. If if uh, the border border is been, uh, has been important because of this and this mistakes, then let's look at them. Let's ensure that by the time we're releasing it, ABCD has been done. But don't ask for bribe. Now, do you think mm -hmm. that uh, from such a case, we are going to see less instances of uh, gender-based violence on our roads? Um, how do you see it coming up in the next, in, in the future? Yes, so this is how I compare it with. You remember eight years ago, mm. we all went out uh, saying, my dress, my choice. Mm. 
Yeah, I remember. <laughs> hey, hey. You remember what happened? Uh, the, the incident was based on the fact that the lady was not properly dressed. Mm -hmm. And the Matatu operators decided to sexually assault her mm -hmm. based on that fact. Yeah. And everybody went with placards outside saying, my dress my dress choice. choice. And the, 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 the Matatu operators were actually penalized harshly and heavily. Mm -hmm. And that has stopped. Yeah. That made a very uh, big impact. Right now you can dress as a woman. I can dress into anything. And no one should accuse me of that. No one should rap me because of how I've dressed. Mm -hmm. So I feel the same will, the same will the same. Uh, happen. Mm -hmm. Only if we make, uh, we make haste before before the natural amnesia sets in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it always we need sets to maximize in. Maximize on on this um, anger mm. so that we regulate everything before we all forget about it. That's what I can say about it. Can us forget? We forget a lot. And tomorrow there is going to be another incident. And if no one is going to record it and pass it mm -hmm. on, we will not know. Yeah. 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 Not sure. now, now I'm wondering what is the role of the normal Kenyan citizen, Kenyan citizen, when it comes to this fight against uh, you know uh, gender-based violence? Mm -hmm. Because even I was, as I was looking at that that that, that video, mm -hmm. there are some Kenyans who are saying, you know, what you should not be recording a video about it. You should be yeah. doing something. You should be talking, mm -hmm. not just recording. But on the other side, if it was not recorded, we wouldn't have known about it. <laughs> so what is the role of us as Kenyans? <laughs> First and foremost, uh, we all have our privacy rights under yeah. the constitution and uh, that was invasion of uh, privacy recording but i wish instead of recording just that one person yeah. within the screams will have come and said stop stop it that's all yeah. as in i'm so sure men will listen to each other if one person will have been no you need to stop instead mm -hmm. of recording maybe it will have avoided the uh, the sexual assault mm -hmm. but also as i don't know if it's all men but you saw the video every man in that video it's like they were sent from one they were reading from the same scripts from the same text everyone going there was going there for the same thing not all men the se okay the people <laughs> but who were there, you draw those were there yeah you would think they have been sent or they had foreseen that this incident is going to happen and this is how we're supposed to respond to it yeah all of them were going to just try and it's like vultures yeah and they were going for the same thing same action so what does that tell you about our men in our society we need to talk to our men yes for those who are sane enough sober enough please talk to our men they need to there's something wrong somewhere, and it's not about border border, it's about our men. They need to respect people's privacy, they need to respect people's uh, women's body. Mm -hmm. And it's high time we just respect each other on uh, human grounds. Wow. That's all. Wow. If it was a man in that car, I don't think his first worry will be his genitals. His first worry will not be that. His first worry yeah. will be maybe his property in the car, mm. his car being damaged. Yes. And I'm not saying that is uh, uh, that is not that is allowed. That's not allowed. But mm -hmm. he's not, his first one would not be um, I'm going to be sexually assaulted. Yeah, yeah because the words of a man, and the words of a woman in, a, in the case of an accident exactly. are so different. They're so different, and now, that means women are more vulnerable, and we have more things now to worry about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So hence, we need more protection. And from that video, you can say you can tell we really need more protection. We do. Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. um, let, let, as we bring this conversation to a close, yes. I want you to uh, have a final word and uh, speak to Kenyans generally. Our take home for the day, uh, 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 you know, what would be your parting shot uh, uh, that you want Kenyans to hear you and this will be your voice of the day. You can talk to them, that is your camera there. <laughs> Hello Kenyans. Um, we all have rights. We are all human. And um, our rights are in the Constitution. It does not differentiate between a man or a woman. So for us to enjoy our rights as enshrined in the Constitution, we also ought to respect other people's rights. If you prevent me from enjoying my rights or curtail my rights, in one way or another, you're also preventing your rights or preventing to enjoy your own rights. 
And I'll just tag it on the same incident that happened on Wangarima Road. The people who violated this lady's rights to privacy and sexually assaulted her, now where are they? They do not have a right to freedom because they violated the other person's right. So respect my rights and in return you're also respecting your rights. That's what I can say. Thank you so much. Sheila, you're doing a good job. Thank you very I'm much. I'm impressed. <laughs> really, I am. How can Thank people you find you on social media if, if somebody wants to get a hold of you? Okay, so on, I'm mostly not a social media person, but mm -hmm. I'm mostly on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And you can find me on uh, Sheila underscore Magomere. Mm -hmm. But you All can right. find Legal Sister on sis, at Sister Legal mm -hmm. on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And uh, Legal underscore Sister Sisters. on uh, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is so. Check them out, legal sister. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, here, there, you, you talk about fighting for the rights of yes. uh, of, of ladies. Yes. Should I say ladies or just children? Any? Society, children. Yes. children society, mm -hmm. male, female. Yes, both. Thank you so much, Sheila, for coming. Thank you very I, much. I appreciate your presence and, of course, my regards. Thank you for having me. All right, all right, all right. that is Sheila uh. Magomere, a founder and CEO of Legal Sister, an advocate of the High Court of Kenya, uh, joining us today in this particular conversation. And this has been the strength of a woman. We're taking a short break. We'll be back in a bit.